Hello guys, welcome back to the show. This is the director's cut. It's not ribeye steak cut. It's not sashimi cut. This is the director's cut. And this is a show about animation and uh, film making. So we're interviewing uh, directors and creators in this show every week in every episode. So today we have a very special guest on the show. Uh, before I reveal who he is, let's take a quick look at a clip. Uh, it's an animation clip called Hope Place. You might have seen it. It's now running in uh, on the YouTube uh, circuit. Okay, and I'm Greg, your host. Let's watch that clip. Guys, yeah. roll it! Welcome back to the show. That was a fantastic clip. You were watching the Hope Place animation, a uh, short animation that was done by uh, this special guest that we have today on the show. Uh, it's sponsored by HSL, Hock Sang Lee. The project manager is UG. This project was uh, actually done by Pixbox Studio in Kuching. Um, and two people uh, made this entire animation. Let's welcome the man himself, the renaissance man, the man who does all sorts of things. He does websites, he does uh, illustration, he does animation, a very creative soul. Let's welcome Mr. Ray Lee. Thanks, Greg. Hey, Hello. Ray. Ray, this is a fantastic piece of work. It's beautiful. I would use the word beautiful to describe it. Now, uh, there seems to be a lot of things that goes into it, a lot of work behind it. Can you tell, you, can you tell us what inspires you? 
uh, when you're creating a piece of uh, beauty like this? What inspires me when I make the work that I make? Actually, a lot of things, including animations and video games and books that I grew up consuming as a child. And even, like, it's an ongoing thing, you know, like, different things inspire us in different ways. But for me, it's any form of art that that kind of evokes this feeling of a world that you can explore. As you can see in the animation, it's like you can see there's a world that's built around this tree. So uh, I would say a lot of the work that I do tries to inject kind of that feeling of the possibility of exploration that is core to a lot of the work that I do, I would say. Ray, you're a Kuching born and bred, Kuching boy, right? Can you share a little bit about your background? Um, where, where did you study? What did you study? And where, uh, what, what kind of work did you do before uh, that led you to where you are right now? I have a pretty typical uh, Kuching background. Uh, went to a Chinese school in pre for preschool. Went to St. Joseph, graduated the Lincoln Wing. Uh, graduated Lincoln Wing where I studied graphic design and also got introduced to motion graphics and motion in general. And, uh, and then after that, I went on to do, you know, the typical work thing just to get by uh, any work that I could. But of, of course, like picking the fun ones, you know, like uh, I love motion and how it can be an extra layer of meaning on top of artwork that you've already done. It can be an extra layer of expression and just trying to look for places where I could like kind of sneak that in into like the different kinds of work that I did or do have done uh, that kind that work being graphic design uh, just motion graphics uh, or illustrations or uh, just you know any kind of creative work that I could like that I happen to be doing I would try to sneak the different things that I love into those things so, all right. So we'll take a short break right now, and when we come back, we'll learn more about the process of animation that Ray went through to make this piece of work. It's really tough. Let's find out why. Okay. Short break. Please come back. Stay tuned. And welcome back to the show. This is the director's cut, and uh, I'm Greg, your host. And this is a show about animation and filmmaking and we interview creators, animators and directors every week. Today we have Ray Lee on the show, Kuching and Born and Bread uh, Boy and uh, we're featuring his animation called Hope Place and you might have seen this already, it's all over the internet. Ray, so this this animation here, Ray, I think you've, uh, you've shared with me before, it's quite a challenging piece of work. Now, uh, can you break it down for us from the pre-production, post-production, and and uh, and production itself? Uh, how long did it take uh, for you to be able to do all this? How long did it take for you to complete this project? Can you break it down for us pre-post, pre-pro, post? Uh, uh, I'm not too sure, but production. Production for this project, uh, this whole place project, took about roughly onwards, upwards of seven months because uh, we had quite a small team, and uh, and we didn't have you know really any experience in traditional animation or frame by frame animation, which is what we did. So I would say like seven and above months took a while. Uh, Pre-production took a good three months, I would say, right and. Uh, and then we went to the production, production which took the rest of the time, rest of the seven months, so about four months in production, uh, with uh, me and Sean, Sean Chai, this uh, this other guy that helps out with the in betweens, and post production was like you know like like quick and easy. We didn't do too much post in it except for like some camera motions and all that. Yeah, so overall, I would say it took more than half a year. 
with about three people on the team, give or take. Okay, and you know, there's something about the uh, images that I see in this uh, animation. It's beautiful. The art direction is simply beautiful, and I know you did the art direction. Um, can you share with us how you came to that look? Like what inspired you and the process for how you, you actually came uh, to that, that uh, the part where you say, ah, this is it, this is, this is the look. Tell us the process of how you de develop the look. The look came, uh, actually the final outcome that you see in the video is like quite a ways from, from the look that we had in mind, which was largely inspired by a game called Broken Age by Double Fine Studios. Uh, by an artist named uh, Bagel Stapley or something. Uh, so I was, uh, I just love the style in which like that game Broken Age was made. And I was like, you know, like we're doing this animation thing. And I was like, oh, like I would really like to try that style out, that very painterly style, that very analog style, even though we were working in digital format. So... Yeah, that's that. The look was like pretty straightforward in developing and just trying to stay to that look as we went on in production. Now, I, I like the way how there's a simplicity about this animation. There's a simplicity about how the characters look. You know, they're, they're made up of simple geometric shapes and form. But the animation itself is very subtle. You know, the subtleties, you manage to, to capture that and the movement. Um, it's quite complex. So in a way you can say that it looks simple, but it manages to, to relay that complexity behind uh, that story. So, you know, how, how did you, how did you uh, manage that uh, animation process? You know, explain to us how, how you did the animation. Like, uh, what, what did it take? The character design was uh, basically the formula for making the characters was taking simple shapes, putting them together, and then creating a simple, readable silhouette for the characters. Most notably, the main character, which is a combination of ovals and like triangles. So, yeah, that was the basic formula that we went with. And for animating, the characters we basically did what we felt traditional animators did with your key poses and then animating between those key poses and uh, sometimes acting out certain actions that we uh, had trouble animating so you can kind of like get a better understanding about how to kind of bring that character to life we would have to like act it out ourselves and then translate that into drawing and animating the characters. Now that is a very challenging piece of uh, work that you have there, uh, this animation. Um, what, was the, what was the single uh, most important thing that you learned out of this experience from the beginning until the end, you know? If I ask you this, what is that one single thing? What is that? that you learned? When we initially went into the project, the aim was to, you know, like, just to see how far we could push uh, our, the limitations of our skills, uh, which wasn't much, you know, like, uh, we didn't really have a base in animation, but we really wanted to do it. And uh, we had really high hopes, if I'm going to be honest. But at the very end, what emerged as the primary, you know, like revelation, for lack of a better word, would be that, you know, like this art form, this very old art form that is animation, is still kind of young in Kuching. And yeah, like it will take effort and time, like to kind of build it to finally realize, like, kind of the images and the work that we have in our heads, it will take some time before we can reach that. But it, yeah, that is basically it. It will take effort and time. It is really that simple, but we kind of like came face to face with that realization at the end. Okay, let's take a quick break. And uh, when we come back, we're gonna find out 
the 500,000 ringgit question, all right? What would Mr. Ray Lee do if he has 500,000 ringgit? Okay, we'll be right back. Welcome back to the show. You're watching The Director's Cut. Uh, and every week we interview filmmakers and creatives uh, and we talk about animation and film. So today we're looking at animation and our guest is Ray Lee and we're looking at his work, uh, Hope Place. And uh, Ray is with us right now. So we're going to ask him in this session the 500,000 ringgit question. Uh, but before that, let's find out from him uh, a few things, all right? So Ray, for, for the young and creative people out there, uh, they might want to, they look at you and say, ah, yeah, I want to do something like that. I want to do animation as well. I want to be in the creative line, you know. What would your advice be for them to help them, uh, you know, set them in the right path or direction? Advice. I don't have much experience in animation, but uh, if, if at all, you know. But if I were to give advice on would-be animators, you know, like, um, what would I tell myself? Uh, well, what helped the most um, for for this animation project was basically uh, knowing what I like. You know, when, when you think about, like, something you want to make, then it's like, okay, like, what does it look like? How am I going to make this happen? All these questions get answered. Uh, a lot of the questions start getting their answers from things that I like, things like work that I've seen before that I was like, I would love to make that. And then it becomes, how do we make that? Because if you don't have that, then you don't know what you want to make. And then if you don't know what you want to make, then you can't make anything. So Ray, that's your advice so but for yourself where are you now and uh, where do you see yourself going uh, which direction what is your next project uh, is, are there any plans uh, can you share that with us i'm not sure where i'm headed right now i'm just uh, doing the whole work thing and then just sticking with the ongoing projects that i have uh, lined up in illustrations and also a game that I'm working on, which is a lot of work. Um, but yeah, just like putting in the time and effort while also taking care of my uh, financial dues in the daytime. Uh, yeah, just like doing the things that I set out to do and just, just living with that. Thanks for sharing all that, Ray. So now we've come to the part where we ask you the 500,000 ringgit question. Ray, are you ready? If someone sponsors you 500,000 ringgit and they say no strings attached, you can do whatever you want, but only on one condition, you get to do what you want, a creative piece of work. What would that be? What would you do? I'm not sure what I do, but uh it would definitely be collaborative collaborative you know um it wouldn't be it probably wouldn't be something uh like like a project shooting for you know the most like beautiful piece of work or whatever it would be more uh growth looking at where we are artistically in kuching and then growing that building on that asking ourselves where we are and then what is the next step and then taking that step repeating that process and maybe manifesting uh, an output a final result which would not be the point um, but yet it would be a collaborative work based uh, with the objective of growing the scene that's what I would do Okay, Ray, we come to the end of the uh, show. Uh, so the last questions uh, before we go is, uh, I want to find out from you whether you have any, you know, last parting advice uh, for the creatives out there, for the young people out there. 
I don't think I have any real practical advice for creatives or anyone in general. Uh, or maybe just general advice, take it easy, calm down. You know, if you're not starving and you've got work, just take it easy. We're all okay. Do things that bring you joy. Get in touch with things that you love, people that you love. And just live a good life. Okay, and that's the end of the show for this uh, episode. Thank you for uh, watching this episode and staying with us until the end. Uh, I'm Greg, your host, and you're watching The Director's Cut. Remember to catch the next episode every Sunday on TVS. You can watch it online as well on tvstv.my or uh, on the YouTube channel. TVS has a YouTube channel as well, and Facebook as well. So uh, those of you can also catch uh, TVS on Astro 122. So this is Greg, and this is The Director's Cut. Remember? Not sashimi cut or rib eye steak cut. It's the director's cut. And this is a cut and out. <laughs>